Hey guys, Johnny here from Ecom SEO. Thanks very much for checking out this channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the number one thing that you need to get right and the first thing you need to do on your Shopify product pages and collection pages if you want to rank in Google in 2020. The first thing first, uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel if you're into Shopify and you want to learn more about SEO and uh, you'll get some really good information in plenty of our videos. And also, we've got a free Shopify course, a three-part video series. You can just head on over to the link down below somewhere and you can get access to that for free. So, okay, let's get into this video. Okay, so what you need to remember is Google is an algorithm. So when Google comes to a page, a product page, a collection page, a home page, Google wants to know, the first thing it wants to do is find out what that page is about. And there's a number of different signals that can be provided by the site itself and then also external signals to let Google know what a particular page is about. But there's one part of the page which it's, it's the, one of the most important areas and it's really simple and it's probably pretty obvious, but it's amazing how many store owners and Shopify store owners especially don't do this. So it's no surprise the most important part of your store is your URL right here. So if you're new to, to Shopify or new to SEO, and this is a collection page, and in Shopify, you scroll on down in your uh, collection page dashboard, and you can edit this URL here. Now, if you just don't touch that, what will happen is Shopify uses a product title here to actually add in the SEO title here, uh, sorry, the, um, the URL here. So, but you wanna be able to edit this manually and you, this is really important. So you wanna make sure you get this right. And uh, then when Google comes to your page, the first thing, one of the first things they're gonna do is uh, crawl the URL and that's how they're actually gonna to get to your page. And that gives them a really good first indication of what a page is about. So a product page, collection page, home page, whatever. And that's why with your home page, it's important to, uh, when you're choosing your domain to understand uh, how that's important as well. But I'm just gonna talk about um, the, all I'm going to talk about in this video is the URL, how important it is, and uh, the way I go about actually uh, optimizing the page, which is actually pretty simple. But I use a, a tool um, a lot of you would use called AREFs. Now it's a paid tool, so um, you can get a, a seven day free trial. Or not, I don't think it's free anymore, I think it's $7 for a, a trial uh, for seven days, so you can get an idea how it works. If you're really serious, I would highly recommend you grab this tool that does a heap of things. Uh, but you can use um, you can use Google Keyword Planner if you want. You can use uh, Keywords Everywhere, which I think you get a hundred thousand credits for ten bucks. So that's that's you know you can just go ahead and do that um, if you're serious about your store, which you should be if you've got a Shopify store up and running. So let's say our store is um, we're, we're selling mountain bikes, and we we're going to set up different collections. Um, we want one for all the different parts for mountain bikes. So we might have wheels. We might have uh, for this example here, I'll put in the keyword explorer, uh, mountain bike gears, uh, mountain bike seats. So what I always do is rather than just, um, let's say it was just mountain, we want to sell mountain bike gears, it, rather than just adding in mountain bike gears here, which is probably not a bad um, a, a bad way of doing it, I always double check here with AREFs. So I come here, go to keyword explorer, make sure I'm in Google. Um, maybe we'll make this USA, even though I'm in Australia. And we could, this might just change the way uh, this is optimized a little bit. So we've got you know, United States now and we've got mountain bike gears. Okay, so it says it gets 300 searches per month and the clicks that come from those searches are 174. So this is also, your, this is where some of the other tools don't give you this uh, information. You want to look at the click data because sometimes you get lower clicks than what actually the search volume is. And, a lot of the reason for that is people will search, but then they don't actually click through to a site. Uh, Google's zero click uh, setup, which is starting to become more and more prevalent uh, with things like featured snippets or drop down uh, question and answer boxes where people can get the answers they're looking for without even clicking through to a site. So um, zero click is a real thing. But you generally want to find a um, you know term that's got, does actually have clicks and it's sort of half relative, re uh, relative to the actual search volume. So, okay, so we've got this section here, keyword difficulty. Um, it's just a guide, but and it says here, we estimate that you'll need backlinks from 13, approximately 13 websites to rank in the top 10 for this keyword. Now, I just use this as a guide because if we're optimizing correctly, this is not always right, but it just gives us a bit of an idea about the competition. So mountain bike gear is a competition that says medium, gonna need 13 websites 
uh, linking to you. Uh, like I say, it's not necessarily true, but it gives you a bit of a, a broad metric. So then we can come down here and we can look at some of the other related terms. Uh, we've got mountain bike gears. Um, so we want that, but let's say uh, fix gears, mountain bike. I'm not sure whether that's actually how to fix gears in the mountain bike. I think that would be, so that's actually um, a how-to question. Um, so we'll just keep that in mind. So mountain bike gears, so it's got a difficulty of 12. Now if we go to mountain bike wheels, that difficulty is a little less, uh, but it's got a high search volume and it's got higher clicks. So um, this is, you know, this is a good term. We could, uh, a much better term than mountain bike gears, even though we might be selling them, to look at uh, being a little more focused on mountain bike wheels. Uh, now we'll go to mountain bike tires. I think that's how you spell tires for the United States. Okay, much higher vo volume. So 3.1K volume, almost the same amount of clicks, medium of 12. Um, so just giving you an idea that the, the, the actual difficulty will change. Uh, mountain bike seats. Okay, so 400, easy. Um, for the keyboard difficulty, and then we'll go mount by handlebars. Go on it searches, and it's easy. So let's say we're going to we could we could build a page for any of those. But what you want to do is actually, again, it seems obvious, but when you're looking to create the URL, because it's the most important part of when it, when Google comes to your store is make sure this is highly relevant. So it makes sense to use the terms that people are searching for. So mountain bike handlebars. So we can copy that and we can add that in to a URL. So that in this case would be mountain bike handlebars. Now then what I can do is go and create sub collections if I want for different types of mountain bike handlebars, or I can keep this broad like this and add lots of products uh, within this collection, different products. And you can go further and you can add uh, tag pages uh, for different brands as well, but most Shopify themes end up with duplicate content uh, by doing that. Uh, and there's ways to actually minimize the duplicate content. I think there's also a number of themes where you can actually, uh, number. Of th well, I know there's one theme in particular that will optimize tag pages correctly without having duplicate content, but that's a whole other story. So instead of just having, um, you know, instead of just using a term that you think might be the right one for your URL, make sure you use your data and your keyword tools to actually tell you uh, where the volume is. Now, the other thing is you can see here, and this is where it gets interesting, you've got 200 searches for handlebars with a space in between, and then you've got a search volume of mountain bike handlebars with no space. And this is, this is what I was trying to get at, uh, just having a look at it. So, I'm going to put handlebars without space in our page. So there we've got a search volume. The difficulty is the same, but the search volume is much higher. So it's gone from 300 to 2.2K. Uh, 2 so, and the click's the same. Uh, so mountain bike handlebars. So cost per click is 60, because the cost per click we sort of look at as well to see what the competition is like. So I just, like, I was just about to use this, um, this term for my URL. But now that I've actually done that little bit more research and found that without the space, it gets more volume, I'm going to use this as my URL. And I won't say because I haven't got my title in here, I think. I'll just, uh, this is just a test store. Just put that in there for now. But then this becomes our URL. No, I'll need products as well. That's fine. So this is how you start to, to use the data to be a little more detailed in what you're doing with your URLs. It's, it's the most important part of, um, as Google comes in, it's one of the most important parts they're gonna look at when they're looking at your, your a page to understand what you're about. And then as you start to optimize everything else correctly with your, your title and your description uh, and your alt tags and all the rest, you've, you've got the foundation right and you've got it organized. So really, really important. Like I said, I'm not going to go through titles and, and descriptions in this video. I just wanted to talk about the uh, importance of the URL. Now, this really hit home for me, and, and, and you know, I always focus on it, but maybe not to the degree I should have when building my Shopify stores. I was at the, the uh, 2000 and, 
19 uh, Chiang Mai SEO conference. And Kyle Roof, um, who's a, a well-known uh, SEO, he's got the um, internet marketing or IMG uh, app uh, that you can head over and check out. And he's also on um, SEO Fight Club with a number of other guys. And he runs a software app called Page Optimizer Pro, which I've got another video on this in this channel somewhere. Um, he was talking about how he was uh, he ran a, was in a competition to actually see who could rank um, the term the fastest in 30 days, and he, he choose, chose a term that you know didn't mean anything, um, but he did it just by using math to prove that Google was is just an algorithm, and um, you need to get these things right. So that's a simpl simplistic version of the story. Um, but the, the takeaway from that was how important it is to understand that Google is an algorithm and uh, you just need to make sure you use your data to, to when you're optimizing your pages. Okay, that's all I wanted to, to run through in this video. Really simple, but uh, like I say, a lot of Shopify store owners don't do this and get this wrong or they don't go into enough detail. Okay, I um, hope that video was helpful. And remember to subscribe. And if you want to grab our free SEO Shopify course, um, use the link below and um, head on over to that page. Thanks.